Hello everyone. We will continue discussing the kinds of feminism. Uh, we will start with French feminism. French feminism refers to a branch of feminist thought from a group of feminists in France from 1970s to the 1990s. This is uh, a kind of uh, feminism. It refers to a certain branch of feminist thought from a group of feminists in France and this French criticism started from 1970s to 1990s. French feminism compared to Anglophone feminism is distinguished by an approach which is more philosophical and literary. This kind of French feminism is characterized by being philosophical and literary at the same time. We use it in we use philosophy, uh, it in philosophy and in literature. Its writings tend to be effusive and metaphorical. Effusive, this means that uh, the writing concerning this kind of French feminism tend to be f overflowing and using a lot of similes and metaphor in its writing. If we compare this kind with a political doctrine and generally focus on theories of the body, so this kind, if we like to know the char character uh, characteristics of this kind, it's more philosophical, more literary, uh, its writing is effusive, metaphorical, and it doesn't concentrate on politics or um, the ideas connected with the political doctrine, but it focuses on the theories of the body. The term includes writers who are not French. We, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean that it's French feminism. Uh, it's a must to uh, be used by French writers. It is not uh, a rule. The term includes writers who are not French, but who have worked substantially in France. They are working in France. And the French tradition, such as Julia Kristeva and Brasha Ettinger. So this kind, it doesn't mean that you have to be uh, from France. You, are, you, are, you have to be a French. You have to be a French citizen. But at the same time, you have to be... Uh, characterized by the French traditions and to uh, work in France. In the 1970s, French feminists approached feminism with the concept of écriture feminine. So in this kind of French feminism, we can uh, mean the female writing, which translates as a female or feminine writing. Helen uh, Ticou argued that writing and philosophy are Phallocentric, and along with other French feminists such as Lucia Legory, Legory emphasized writing from the body as superficial exercise. So this kind of writing start to you have to write something from a female and to a female, a creature feminine, and this is concentrating one of the ideas of the French feminism. The work of the feminist psychoanalyst and philosopher Julia Kristeva has influenced feminist theory in general. So the work of those feminists in French feminism, especially uh, the feminist and uh, psychoanalyst and the philosopher Julia Kristeva, uh, has influenced not only feminist theory but at the same time feminist literary criticism in particular. From 1990, 1980s onward, the work of artist and psychoanalyst Brasha Ettinger has influenced literary criticism. So uh, we have Julia Kristeva and at the same time Prussia Ettinger. They start, both of them, uh, not only uh, they have affected uh, feminism, but at the same time they have affected literary uh, criticism in general. Literary criticism, in particular, sorry, literary criticism and feminism generally. Um, so Prussia Ettinger has influenced literary criticism, art history and film theory. They, they, they actually people who are uh, following uh, the the, uh, the kind of French criticism. They are very rich in affecting different fields as art history, film theory, literary criticism, feminism. However, at the school, Elizabeth Wright pointed out none of these French feminists aligned themselves with the feminist movement as it appeared in the Anglophone world. Those actually feminists who uh, follow, who have followed the kind of French feminism, they are not con be considered as feminists, but at the same time as scholars, critics, and at the same time feminists. We will have uh, to concentrate now, we'll uh, turn to the second kind of feminism and uh, discuss it in details. 
we finished post modern feminism french feminism and uh, we'll turn to anarcha feminism anarcha feminism also called anarchist feminism and anarcho feminism before starting with this kind we have to know what is anarchism uh, anarchism mean that uh, you are free if you are you, ha- you are a person should determine his life and his decisions this anarchism start to call for the uh, to, for uh, the end of any power structure because uh, any power structure is the source of oppression so if you uh, if we delete this kind of power structures in our life we will feel free and we will determine our own decisions our own life uh, and this is will be um, simply uh, make your life uh, easier and better than before so if we link between anarchism anarcha and feminism this will con- this kind will start to have the same idea behind to finish the hierarchy the patriarchal hierarchy over the female they concentrate this is this is a kind of oppression this is a kind of power over the female so we have to finish this kind to be able to f- to feel free and to enjoy your life so it generally views patriarchy as a manifestation of an involuntary hierarchy anarcha feminists believe that the struggle against patriarchy is an essential part of class struggle and the anarchist struggle against the state so if uh, those uh, uh, people who are supporting anarchism they are calling for of or the finish of the end of class struggle uh, uh, at the same time the state the the power the power of the state the any kind the political uh, power o- of the state so at the same time they try to find if, if it is linked with feminism to finish the power of the patriarchy over the female in a sense the philosophy sees anarchist struggle as a necessary component of feminist struggle and vice versa so in essence this the, the philosophy behind this one with the feminism to have something called feminist struggle against the uh, patriarchal uh, hierarchy or the female start to uh, struggle against the male the hierarchy of the male the domination of the male as L. Susan Brown puts it as anarchism is a political philosophy that opposes all relationships of power and it's inherently feminist so anarchism according to this feminist she tries to say that we are searching for even it's a political one we will search at the same time to delete the oppression concerning the female important hysteric hysteric anarch, anarcha feminist include emma we have different examples of those uh, anarcha feminist uh, as emma goldman uh, federica uh, montsny Uh, Voltaire Duclair, Lucy Barsons. We have different actually feminists concerning uh, the anarcha feminism, and, and all of them start to uh, try to delete the patriarchal hierarchy, the patriarchal domination over the female. We have different contemporary anarcha feminist group include Bolivia Mujeres Crendo, uh, and we have actually different ones. even in uh, contemporary ones or uh, important hysteric anarcha feminist as Emma Goldman, Frederick Montsini, we so have old ones and new ones and all of them search for the delete of the oppression of the female the, the, the oppression of uh, the female from the male hierarchy patriarchal hierarchy but at the same time it's a political group searching for the finishing of any kind of oppression and in anarcha feminism they search for to end the higher the oppression of the male over the female we'll turn to the fourth kind let's go to the fourth kind this is the fourth kind of uh, feminism which is socialist and marxist feminism Social feminism 
connects the oppression of women to Marxist ideas about exploitation, oppression, and labor. So in, in Marxism, we are searching for discussing the ideas of oppression of uh, the capitalist society. So in the socialist um, Marxist feminism, we uh, will start to uh, discuss the ideas of exploitation, oppression, and labor concerning the female. We are we, we start to discuss those ideas in Marxism or social criticism, exploitation, oppression, uh, labor. So we'll con concentrate on this kind of socialist Marxist feminism on those ideas of exploitation, oppression, and labor. But we will concentrate on the female as part of the society. Okay, socialist feminists think an equal standing in both the workplace and the domestic sphere holds women down. So in this kind, we concentrate on two ideas, workplace and domestic sphere. Both of them, any kind of oppression concerning those two ideas, domestic sphere, domestic sphere and workplace, this hold, uh, those kinds of oppression hold women down. Socialist feminists see prostitution, domestic work, child care, and marriage as ways in which women are women are exploited by patriarchal system that devalues women and the substantial work they do. So, in this kind of Marxist socialist criticism, we we'll try to stress on that when women start to uh, that uh, the socialist feminists see prostitution, domestic work, child care, marriage, all these elements are ways or evidences that women are exploited from the patriarchal system. And this patriarchal system all the time devalue women and even or subsequently the work they do. Socialist feminists focus their energies on broad change that affects society as a whole. As the female is very important part of the society, half of society. So if we, we start to solve the problems or search for her uh, freedom or her uh, equality, her to, uh, justice in her case, so we'll start to affect the whole society actually. So socialist feminists focus their energies on broad chain that affects society as a whole rather than on an individual basis. We will not concentrate only uh, on female for the female sake, but because female is a part of society, we like to improve the society, the whole society. Uh, so we'll start to improve her state or we'll start to improve uh, any kind of social problems concerning her to be able to increase uh, the prosperity of the society. They see the need to work alongside not just men, but all other groups, as they see the oppression of women as a part of a larger pattern that affects everyone involved in the capitalist society. So if the female is oppressed, this means that we will, uh, the, oh, the whole society will be oppressed because this is a very important part of the society. So to improve the society, to make it better than before, so we have to delete or try to finish all social problems concerning anyone and one of those uh, who start to be affected, greatly affected is the female, so we'll try to finish the problems of the female, especially the social ones. Marx felt when class oppression was overcome, gender oppression would vanish as well. So Marx tried to, if we try to finish the, the whole society problems, capitalist society problems, will at the same time, will not find any kind of inequality, even this one between the male and the female. According to some socialist feminists, this view of gender oppression as a subclass of class oppression is naive. A much of the work of socialist feminists has gone towards separating gender phenomena from class phenomena. So if we try the class phenomena, we we'll start to improve the uh, problems of the class struggle will start return will uh, finish the problems of the female struggles between the female and the male female struggle against the patriarchal society marx felt when class oppression so marx tried to stress the idea that we will if we uh, deal with the class oppression and we'll overcome this problem will at the same time in return will finish the gender problem 
alongside with the class problems. Some contributors to socialist feminism have criticized these traditional Marxist ideas. So we have some idea that they criticize this idea uh, for being largely silent on gender oppression. So uh, uh, some people start to criticize Marx that he only uh, concentrated on the ideas of class struggle and ignore the ideas of female struggle over patriarchy. This is a kind of oppression, so he should put them into his consideration. But he, his own idea actually that if we solve the problem of the class struggle, it, uh, it will be consequently uh, the female struggle against the, the male uh, domination will be solved. But critics start to not agree uh, with uh, to this idea. They like they criticize Mark that he should uh, concentrate on both kind of struggles, even the class struggle or the female struggle. Other socialist feminists, many of whom belong to radical women and the free. Uh, Freedom Socialist Party, two long-lived American organizations point to the classic Marxist writings on Frederick Engels and August Peeble as a powerful explanation of the link between gender oppression and the class exploitation. So we have different critics start to um, criticize the ideas of separating class struggle from gender struggle. In the late 19th century and early 20th century, both Zetkin and Eleanor Mar Marx were again in the demonization of men and supported a proletarian revolution that would overcome as many male-female inequalities as possible. So they try to um, uh, concentrate on the uh, the class struggle and at the same time the female struggle male female they consider male and female part of society they are the society the whole society so if we uh, finish all, all kinds of struggles it will be uh, something uh, great in finishing the inequalities as possible uh, their movement already had the most radical demands of women's equality. Most Marxist leaders, including Zetkin and Alexandra Kolontai, uh, counterposed Marxism against feminism rather than to trying to combine them. They criticized that the, uh, the, the, the separation of class struggle from female struggle over the patriarchal uh, domination, uh, and it's better to uh, combine them together to overcome all the struggles of the whole society. We'll turn now to the, uh, the, the, the other kinds of uh, feminism. We uh, finish postmodern feminism, French feminism, anarchist feminism, and Marxist fem uh, social socialist feminism. Now we'll turn to the other kinds of feminism. We'll discuss now radical feminism. This is number five. The kind number five is radical feminism. Radical feminism considers the male controlled capitalist hierarchy which it describes as sexist as the defining feature of women's oppression. So radical feminism tries to follow the main reason behind uh, oppression of the female. Radical women's oppression, radical feminists believe that women can free themselves only when they have done away with what they consider an inherently oppressive and dominating patriarchal system. Radical feminists believe that women can free themselves only when they have done away with what they consider an inherently oppressive and dominating botanical system. This means that the female will feel secured, equal when she is away from this patriarchal domination or from the male. From the male. When she is away from the male, she will be okay. She will feel equality and freedom and every good thing. Radical feminists feel that there is a male-based authority and power structure and that it is responsible for oppression and inequality. And that as long as the system and its values are in place, society will not be able to be reformed in any significant way. So those radical feminists, they see that the society will not be improved until we finish or we get rid of the oppression, uh, uh, get rid of the oppression of the male over the female. It have to, uh, the society has to be reconstructed to uh, be changed totally from the authorities control, uh, control, control it 
to be uh, able to uh, improve at the same time the state of or the case of the female in general. So radical feminists feel that there is a male-based authority. We have in the society something called male-based authority and power structure, and those, both of them, are responsible for the oppression and inequality. And if we like to, uh, like to uh, have uh, a good society, we have to reform it again in a. Uh, any, we have to reform the society again from the very beginning. Some radical feminists see no alternatives other than the total uprooting and reconstruction of society. So they they believe that to have a good society, we don't have another alternative. Just we have something called total uprooting and reconstruction of society in order to achieve their goals. Uprooting and reconstruction. We have to reconstruct the society again to build it from uh, from uh, again uh, from the very beginning to have a good society to they to uh, achieve their goals concerning especially the female. Over time, a number of subtypes uh, from uh, radical feminism. We have subtypes. We have, for example, we have uh, cultural feminism. We have separatist feminism and anti-pornography feminism. Uh, cultural feminism is the ideology of female nature or female essence that attempt to revalidate what they consider and undervalued female attributes. We have to change the lifestyle uh, you know something called the lifestyle of the female it emphasizes the difference between women and men but consider the difference to be psychological and to be culturally constructed rather than biologically innate they concentrate in this culture feminism to uh, make the uh, make the, the society be aware of the difference between the women and the men but not any difference the difference which is psychological and cultural and not and this kind not be biological. We will not concentrate on the biological difference. We will concentrate on the psychological one and at the same time the cultural one. It's the critics, the critics of the cultural feminism, which is one type of the radical feminism, assert that because it's based on the essentialist view of the difference between women and men, and advocates independence and institution building, it has led feminists to retreat from politics to lifestyle. So uh, the critics of this kind of feminism, which is a subtitle of radical, is called cultural feminism, assert that because we are concentrating on the difference between women and men, and uh, try to uh, get the independence and an institution building of the female we have uh, to retreat the female again but not from the political point of view but from something called lifestyle one such critic like Alice Echoes feminist historian and culture theorist credits uh, Red Stockings member Pro Williams who is introducing the term uh, start to uh, with uh, Pro Williams start to use uh, the term of culture feminism in 1975 to describe the debrutalization of radical feminism to get rid of don't put the uh, the female issues in, uh, into the political issues they are cultural ones we concentrate on the psychological and uh, uh, psychological and cultural ideas not on political ideas uh, we have another kind of uh, radical feminism which is called we have two kinds cultural feminism and separatist feminism is a form of radical feminism that doesn't support heterosexual relationships. This kind depends on separation be between men, between male and female, to separate them, to separate them from each other. Uh, so uh, this form uh, start to uh, not doesn't support heterosexual relationships. The sexual disparities between men and women are unresolvable. Separatist femen feminists generally don't feel that men can make positive contribution to the feminist movement. They consider that the, the existence of the men beside the woman would not add something to the theory of feminism. And that even well intentioned men replicate patriarchal dy dynamics. He is one of the patriarchal society, one of the patriarchal domination. So to separate between uh, the male and the female is something good for the female. They will not add something new for the female, but uh, in contrast, they will do some uh, a passive, a passive uh, effect. 
uh, will start to cause a bathroom effect. Author Marlene Fry describes separatist feminism as separation of various sorts of moods from men. This uh, Feminist Fry start to uh, describe in, in briefly that separation of various sorts of moods from men and from institutions will start to separate men from uh, from institutions, relationships, rules, activities uh, that are male defined, male dominated, and operating for the benefit of males and the maintenance of male privilege. This separation being initiated or maintained at will by women will start to switch all the places which are male dominated to be women dominated will separate from start to have a kind of separation between uh, male and female in all forms in all institutions in all relationships to build the society from the very beginning but on something else different from the uh, the male dominated society to uh, something concerning the female dominated society and to, to have a kind of separation between the male and the, fem and the female. So uh, we have uh, to sum up this kind, radical feminism, we uh, start to get rid of the oppression of, the, of, the, fe of the, the male over the female and to change the whole society from the very beginning, to re reconstruct the society. We have different kinds of sub-radical feminism. We have cultural uh, separatist and anti-pornography. Uh, we studied together cultural uh, feminism and uh, separatist feminism, which are subtypes of uh, radical feminism in details, uh, will start to turn to the other, uh, another kind of feminism.